Hey, it's Matt. I hope you had a great 2019. And when it comes to December, I always want to look back on the past 12 months or maybe the past few weeks even and understand, okay, what worked? What was different? What can I do better? And so in this video, I want to go through the highlights of my 2019 and share with you what happened, what worked well, what I want to do differently. First of all, 2019 for me was the year of volume. If I look back, the amount of things that I have done and the amount of action I have taken is astounding. And that alone taught me a big lesson. When you do things in volume, when you do things a lot, something will change, something is going to happen. And that's exactly what I was thinking at the end of last year in 2018, when I wrote a contract with myself. Now, this is something I have done for two years in a row. And what I do is I write down three things I'm going to do in the next 12 months three actions that will make me think and act in a very different way. That way I know I'm gonna get different results. It doesn't matter what they are, but they will be different. They will tell me something else. So I write them down in a contract and at, at the end I sign the contract, but I also sign a check to an organization I don't like. And then I give the contract and the check to a friend of mine. This year was Soph and Frank, shout out to my custodian. And I tell them, look, if I don't do these three things by the end of the year, mail the check. It's already stamped, it's already signed, just mail it. And the reason why I do that is that I have something to lose. You know, whenever we set good intentions or goals, there's always this weird thing that if we don't take action, we think things will stay the same. So that's why I like to put a cost to not taking action. So they actually, ah, oh, I have to do something. Now I'm in the game. Now I have to change things, whether I like it or not, whether it's comfortable or not. I need to change them and see what happens. So that's what was on my mind on New Year's Eve 2019. And not only I wore a wig and spent it with amazing friends, but also I was really excited to see what happened. I just moved from Manchester, I went traveling and then moved to London, and I was excited for a very different year. So here's what happened. A big thing in my 2019, and it was actually in my contract, was to publish two books. Now, the first book, Invest Your Time, actually got translated and published in Vietnamese as well and hit Amazon bestselling status in the US and UK on launch week, which was amazing. It also helped me to connect with more influencers and more friends, help more people. I got amazing feedback. That was great and actually something that I wouldn't have done. And so it was part of like all that action, that movement of 2019. It was also write a book, but also I had to write a second book, which just came out in December 2019. And though I'm very proud of that book, the timing wasn't that good for me. And the lesson there was, don't set plans and structures too far in advance because you don't know the kind of person you will be 12 months from now. You don't know the kind of structure and life you will have 12 months from now, especially if you move fast, break things and take action in volume. So writing the book was an incredible experience. I was really, really blessed to be supported by incredible people around me on social media, but also in the writing process. And that was another theme for my year, collaborate more. When you travel a lot and work from a laptop, it's easy to just do everything by yourself. And that's really playing it small. So this year I collaborated with more people, um, both in terms of editing, but also collaborating with friends and uh, starting new projects and doing things together and reaching out to people online and and that's been a big big theme and in fact one thing that came out of it was a podcast I collaborated with a great friend of mine Cassius shout out to my boy and we have this podcast resolve we actually were very dedicated to it for about three months we kill flower <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the comments welcome to resolve hello and welcome to another episode of resolve FM so hello and welcome to the Resolve podcast. Hello and welcome to the new and improved Resolve podcast. Hello and welcome to Resolve, the only podcast that tells you what it takes to get what you want. And then decided that it wasn't quite aligned with where we wanted to go. But still, it was an incredible experience and we both gained from it in terms of confidence and knowledge when it comes to creating content and putting a word out there, but also collaborating. And that was a massive theme. I also work with other people with affiliate launches and uh, really understanding what works and what doesn't and also getting accountability from other people. And that was amazing. Another theme for the year was physical training and fitness. 
this was pretty crazy because I started the year as a normal year. I like to train, I like to work out, I like to stay active. But to me, it was just normal. And then after a while, I just started training multiple times a day. And this was thanks to the people around me that showed me that that was possible. And actually in August, I hadn't run in a very, very long time. And I decided to go on a, a few short runs. And then one day it was like, you know what, I'm gonna do three miles every three hours of 24 hours. And I did that. And then after that, I thought, I'm gonna run a marathon in four weeks. And I did that, I finished it in three hours, 44 minutes. But the beautiful thing around this wasn't just the fact that I was pushing myself and seeing where my limit was, and there wasn't one, but also the fact that other people were on that journey with me, both helping me figure it out, but also getting inspired by what I was doing. And in fact, when I went to Oslo, I got to thank my great friend, Michael, for coming with me, flying in from Berlin and running the marathon with me, wearing a weighted vest. Again, using my physical side of life and my body, that's helped me so much, understanding who I am, what I can be, what I want to do, but also break my mental states when, when I felt a bit weak or not able to do something or not able to get to a certain level. I would just go for a run and that would change my state, change my day, change my month. And you know, I feel that if you can rescue enough bad days and make them good or make them great, well, guess what? You're going to have a great life. There's no choice. Was it 300 dates or 300 women? You... No, no, 300 women I, I spoke to. So this could be like, She's, hey, okay. in the streets, oh. and then she walks away, right? Oh, wow. Or it could be like, you know, we go out and we go out for like a month. Something else I did differently and that changed me, I changed my year. And there was in the contract was to get rejected by more than 300 women. And actually what I had in my contract was to go on 29 dates within a year. And that could have been a single date or a repeat date. It doesn't matter. I could have done every single one with a different person or all of them with one person. That was the ethos of, um, of that point in the contract. But equally, I wanted to push myself to do things in a different way, to know that apps were not enough, to know that I needed to try something else. And to get more comfortable with talking to women in real life and talking to them on the tube in London or at the airport or in a coffee shop or at the supermarket. And so much came out of it. So many amazing interactions, amazing moments from a rejection to a great smile, making someone's day, to going out with someone for a month, or going out with someone for a couple of days, but sharing something very intimate in every aspect of life. Have the courage to just uh, take action and say hi to someone, and something nice will come out of it. And to me, this way, but also writing online and creating more vlogs and videos like this one, I also had to learn how to be more open and really share my lessons, but also share the tough moments. You know, it wasn't always easy to go through these, these rejections and to put myself in um, the game of life, you know, both in business and fitness and dating. It's been a very tough year and sometimes I've really doubted myself and doubted what I was doing, doubted my results, but actually the process was actually the main, what I got out of it most, both, both because it was so fun, because it changed me so much. And so part of it was also being able to open up and being able to, communicate with people in a very open and trusting way and that's a way to break down barriers and something that I want to take with me for the rest of my life being able to trust other people open up say what's on my mind say what I think and I find that that creates a great relationship with other people with other humans whether it's through a camera like the two of us or whether it's again in a cafe or in a business meeting and that was an amazing lesson for me um, in 2019. And then business-wise, I also launched a few products. But in that case, I would say I want to do more volume when it comes to content, but also when it comes to launches and working with people because sometimes I feel that I'm playing small a little bit, you know, especially in this area of life. And that I can help more people just by sharing all the crazy experiments I do in life. And I realize how much I rely on other people, but also how much other people are inspired by all the things that I do and all the crazy experiments that I run. And so finally, this has been a crazy year. It's a year where I feel like so much has happened, but at the same time, not enough has happened because I feel like I've laid really solid foundations and changed so many things that will stay with me for the rest of my life and realized so many things that will stay with me for the rest of my life. But you know, years are made up. We don't get to, to December saying, oh, okay, that chapter is done. No, life goes on. And so I feel that <laughs> I want more volume. And I, especially in those areas of life that I feel like I haven't quite figured it out. Maybe there's more that I want to experience and figure out and live. And so 
look forward to more of that and in all this i feel incredibly grateful for the people that are around me including you that support me on this journey that remind me that it's okay to experiment to see what you can do to see what you can be to see where your potential your limits lie and never find them that it's great to share with others and learn together and grow together and push each other and so i'm very very grateful for my tribe my family and all the people that support me and follow me and join me on this journey And I can't wait for more, more of this, more life, more experiments, more challenges, more tough moments, more tough lessons. And like I said, in general, more life. And I can't wait to share that with you and for you to share it with me if you'd like. So let me know, what was your biggest lesson or biggest theme? For me, it was volume. What was your biggest theme for 2019? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoy this video, I'd appreciate a share as well. But most importantly, a comment. Let me know your theme, your main lesson. What are you going to do differently next year? And we'll speak soon. Thank you for being on this journey with me.